everybody. So I wanted to talk a little bit about greens. So one of the key challenges I feel for people when they are struggling with losing weight is our dependence on greens. And I know this was a big one for me. Um, I don't think when I started this program that I'd ever gone a meal that didn't have some kind of grain in it, whether it was, you know, pasta or a bread, a, a bagel, a bialy, um, you pick it, corn muffin, you know, I was obsessed. And I don't know that I was noting all the impact that it had on my body, um, but it does. So grains affect us in a few different ways. So I'm just referring to a few of my notes because I don't want to forget to um, uh, say some stuff. But um, we tend to have an immune response um, to anything that happens in our body. And the immune response is often creating inflammation. Now, gluten is the um, protein that is in the grain, Okay. And it's the sticky stuff that we use to sort of make pizza. Um, but our physiology was never really designed to um, process and break down the gluten protein. Um, and what's happening is about 30% of us as a country are sensitive. And when we are sensitive to something, it causes inflammation. And you, how it's presenting itself is in things like ADHD, headaches, um, neuropathy, migraines, um, there's a great book called The Grain Brain by Dr. David Perlmutter that I really recommend everybody check out. And it really makes the connection between the impact that gluten has had on people's uh, neurology. Um, the other key thing is I found when I muscle test people and we identify that they have a sensitivity to gluten, not necessarily fully celiac, but they have a sensitivity to it, that when they remove it, they find their headaches are gone, their energy level is better, their focus is better. Um, and the reality is, is it's just not the same gluten that we had when we were growing up. I mean, I'm 48, so... Um, if, or if you think about it, if you go to Europe or someplace and have pasta, you don't have the same kind of feeling that you do when you have the food within our um, country. So I always sort of say food is information. Um, it plays a role in controlling our DNA. Um, and I've done before like a gene snip where they show your different gene and they show the variances of your genes. And the whole point of that is through diet and lifestyle, you can actually change the expression of your genes or how your genes are interpreted. So the challenge with gluten for a lot of people is that it it turns on and off certain genes. And what it does with some of the genes is it turns on the ones that make chemicals in our body that create inflammation. And that's what tends to cause a lot of that problems for people. So in our body, we need proteins, we need fats, we need carbs. Um, grains are certainly considered carbs, but we want to have the right carb to help our digestive system. We want to feed your brain, we want to feed your nervous system, but we want to do it within the limits um, to keep your body clean and lean. Now, when you have grains that you see that are enriched, that basically means that they've taken out nutrients out of the grain to sort of divide and conquer and make get more out of the grain. But in that case, you're then losing the different nutrients that you need to have within what you're eating. So it might say enriched with B vitamins and stuff. Well, it should have had that to begin with. It didn't need to be taken out, which I always find to be a challenge because when you hear things like enrichment, you think it's something that's better. Um, so a whole grain is the entire grain. So that includes the bran, the germ, and the endosperm, okay, which is the starchy part. Um, obviously, the most popular grain in the United States is wheat. So you can have some things that are not um, a grain, let's say like an oat, that technically could be gluten-free but can often be cross-contaminated. So you want to make sure that you're watching that as well if you're trying to stay away from grains. The other key thing is that if you are someone who's trying to stay away from grains, you got to watch having anything other than grass-fed meat because you don't want to have beef and stuff that's been um, fed with grains because that would be the same as you ingesting it. So um, things that are not whole grains are things like multi-grain, 100% wheat, seven grains, stone ground. We're, ideally, you want things that have the whole grain in it if you are going to have whole wheat. And just make sure, and we'll have an, uh, another um, discussion about labels, um, but just make sure that you're looking at how what the carb count is. And ideally, you're looking for some fiber in your carb in your, with your grains so that you have that slower rise to your blood sugar. Um, so some of the best, some foods only contain a small amount of the whole grain, but we'll say it's whole grain on the front of the package. So again, this is about looking at the labels. All cereals um, and grains, you want to read the ingredient list first and look for the following sources of whole grains as the first ingredient. Bulgur, whole wheat flour, um, whole oats or oatmeal, whole grain corn or cornmeal, brown rice, whole rye, whole grain barley, wild rice, buckwheat, buckwheat flour, Millet, quinoa, which is an, a great sort of protein, also works like a protein and sort of a carb in your body, but has a low glycemic impact um, on your blood sugar. 
So these are all sort of important. Now, starchy vegetables like spaghetti squash and stuff like that, they're all good sources of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Um, the best choices do not have added fats with them. Um, so parsnips, plantains, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, acorn squash, butternut squash, green peas, and corn. But just keep in mind, because of their starchy content, they're not really great for you while you're trying to perhaps be on the journey to lose some weight. So those would be the things that I would give up if that if your goal is very focused. Um, so here's the thing with grains at the end of the day. You have to decide how important they are in your diet. I think one of the things that I did very smartly was I kind of went off them for about six weeks. And when we teach this program through the 12-week program, the first six weeks is recommended to be grain-free. And that's really to wean you off of the cravings and also to show you that it's survivable. But the key is when you do start to add them back in, if you have hit your weight goals and you just want to you know, live as a lifestyle, then it's about how you balance it. And that's the key because if I go back to the way I was eating before where I had pasta at just about every meal um, and certainly wasn't having breakfasts that had proteins and fiber at all, that's when the weight holds on. So it's a good thing for you to play around with to decide what its impact is for you. Um, obviously, if you don't have stomach binding and all of that, then you probably don't have celiac, but the food sensitivity testing might be something to see if you see that you're not losing the weight. Um, so if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Take care.